Hi, hello friends. Welcome back to KRJ Education Series. So we have started from signal sound system. As we have already completed signal sound system fully, then we have started analog electronics. And of course, in analog electronics also, we have been completed the majority of the topics. Now we are discussing about operational amplifier. Hope you all remember. So let's start from there. So we left some of the properties already we were discussed about operational amplifier. We have seen uh, the <coughs> properties of operational amplifier and the difference between ideal operational amplifier and practical operational amplifier. Then we saw the concept of virtual grounding. So let's continue. There are a few more things here to discuss about operational amplifier. You must uh, remember some of the properties of the operational amplifier. Of course, they all are very, very important. As we are observing that operational amplifier is having so many applications. If you are observing, with the help, the help of virtual grounding concept, we have designed so many applications. What is the meaning of virtual grounding? Whenever we are applying virtual grounding, first cross examine whether the ideal operational amplifier is given to you or not. That is very important. That is the first step that you must do. And second thing, you will have to cross examine whether the negative feedback is given or not. So that is another most important point while applying the concept of virtual routing. You will have to cross examine whether the negative feedback has been given or not. That is the another most important point. After identifying these two, what you can take? You can consider that the voltage available across the non inverting terminal and the voltage will going to be available across the inverting terminal are always equal to each other. So by applying this concept, you can easily solve any type of questions from operational amplifier. For example, I will be taking one general circuit for your understanding. Let us assume there is some resistor is given to us and it is directly connected to the ground and they said this value is 10 ohm. After that, this resistor has been directly connected with the op amp and uh, this is non is an inverting terminal and this is non inverting terminal. Non inverting terminal has been connected with the, a certain amount of supply voltage and they told the supply voltage value is Pm sin omega t and let us take that value of Pm is 10 sin omega t. Value of the resistance is given here is 5 ohm. Now what they did is they took negative feedback here, they took negative feedback here that has been directly connected across the output terminal V0 and it is given that the value of resistor is 5 ohm. The question is what is the value of output voltage here in that case? Just cross examine directly. No other data is given in the question, only this is the given. Diagram is given and negative feedback is given. You will have to be calculated the value of output voltage. How can we calculate the output voltage, sir? First thing, observe whether the negative feedback is given or not. Yes, it is clearly indicated that the negative feedback is given in this circuit. From negative terminal only, we have taken the feedback to the output port. So, from this, what I can say, whenever we are applying under if nothing is mentioned about the type of nature of the operation amplifier, you can take it as by default, you can take ideal operation amplifier. If it is not mentioned in the question whether it is ideal op amp or practical op amp, yourself you can take that is what? Ideal operation amplifier only and you can apply all the concept, whatever the properties that we are applying. Now, can you please do it sir? Can you please do it? Just uh, open it once. Sorry, just apply the concept of V plus under V minus and I can say the value of V plus and V minus are going to be equal to each other. That is the first thing. And we also know some of the basic properties of ideal operation amplifier. That is the current, bias current that is entering into the op amp is going to be 0 ampere in case of ideal operation amplifier. If this current is 0 ampere, then tell me what will be the expected voltage drop across this 5 ohm resistor. Since the current flowing in this network is 0 ampere now, sir. So the voltage drop across this 5 ohm resistor will be 0 ampere into 5 ohm. Of course, absolutely it will be 0 voltage. It means there will be no any voltage drop across the resistor. Since if there is no any voltage drop across the resistor, how can we uh, face it for this? See, let me show you. How to calculate the value? See, if there is no any voltage drop, then I can say, Whatever the voltage that we are giving here, that same voltage will be appearing here also, 10 into sin omega t. So from this what we can conclude, across the non-inverting terminal, the 
available voltage is going to be 10 into sin omega t. The same voltage is going to be reflected across the inverting terminal also. From this we can say B minus and B plus both will be having the amount of voltage as 10 sin omega t. Now just apply nodal at this junction that is B minus junction. If you are applying nodal only two branches we will have to consider because the current that is entering into op amp is going to be 0 ampere. So I am not considering this branch. Now if you are applying nodal there what expression we will get sir? Across the inverting terminal B minus divided by 10 ohm plus B minus minus output voltage is V naught. We will be taking output voltage V naught divided by the available resistor is 5 equal to 0. Now if we are solving this expression what will be obtaining sir? LCM is uh, 10. See denominator is going to be 10. So multiply numerator by 2. Such that if you are multiplying it by 2, then what will happen, sir? Denominator will become 5 into 2, that will be 10. Now you can add the numerator. So 3 times of V minus minus 2 times of V naught equal to 0. From this part, you can say the value of V naught is going to be 3 by 2 minus minus 3, sorry, plus 3 by 2 times of V naught. Sorry, that is not V naught, V minus, V minus. Correct now sir? This is your output voltage expression. From this what you can say, V naught equal to 3 by 2 times of given supply voltage. Supply voltage is 10 sin omega t. Now if you are cancelling it, this will be 5, 5 times of 3 will be 15 times of sin omega t will become the final answer. So from this what we can say, since the voltage, if you are observing the given circuit, Input voltage has been given across the non-inverting terminal. That's why your output voltage also become positive. There is no phase shifting. You can observe the phase shifting between input and output voltage if and only if the supply voltage will be given across the inverting terminal V minus. Okay, that's it. So that is how we are applying the concept of virtual grounding whenever questions should be asked in the examination from our band. So there are few more things as I told uh, you will have to remember whenever we are discussing about operation amplifier. The first one is the properties of operation amplifier. The first one in the exam sometimes what they will uh, give is they will give two type of things. One is they will call AD and the another one they will call AC. So they will give two terms here. So these terms will be given and you will request to calculate the value of common mode reduction ratio CMMR. What is this AD and the AC sir? Just to recollect once, we know AD means differential gain of operation amplifier and uh, AC means common mode gain of operation amplifier. So this is we know, this is what sir? Common mode gain of upper, this is common mode gain, this is common mode gain of operational amplifier and what about the AD sir that is differential gain differential gain of operational amplifier so now we know these two things very well once they are asking CMMR you will be requested to calculate the value of CMMR that is called common mode rejection ratio whenever this is given it will be given in the question how will you do sir what is the formula the term common mode, rate, common mode rejection ratio is nothing but the difference with sorry, ratio between differential gain and the common mode gain. And same time, sometimes what they will ask is calculate the value of common mode rejection ratio in dB decibel. In that case, take 20 times of log base 10. Formula is going to be same, differential gain upon common mode gain. That is the other most important one. So there are few more things. This is one question that will be repeatedly asked in the exam. Next up, slave it. The other most important question is from OPA, they will ask you to calculate the value of slave rate. How to calculate the slave rate sir? To calculate the value of slave rate, we just wanted to observe the Maximum changes in the value of output dv naught by dt. So that is what we are simply calling it as slave rate. So this is in simple term, I can define it as s dot term slave rate. So how should I write the value of output expression? V naught can be written as input voltage Vn into gain of the up amp, open to gain. 
So that will be given in the question. Now from this what you can do is with the help of this gain under Vn, we can rewrite this expression gain into Vn can be written as Vm into sin omega t. This is the expression for V0. Now differentiate the output voltage with respect to time period. This can be rewritten as A into input voltage Vn into omega into cos omega t. We need slave rate maximum value. We are always exploring. This is the formula. Maximum value of slave rate. This is the formula to obtain the slave rate. Slave rate should be always, this is maximum. It is going to be maximum when the value of omega t will be equal to 0 or pi. You can take, sorry, 2 pi. That is the point where the value of cos pi will become, cos 2 pi will become 1, cos 0 will become 1. That is the point where we are achieving the maximum slave rate. So the maximum slave rate is going to be A into input voltage, that is B max. This is not Vn, that is input maximum voltage into omega, that is the formula. By using this formula, you can easily calculate the value of slave rate whenever it is asked in the examination. Don't, don't use it, that is another most important formula. Okay. And our next thing is, <coughs> from operational amplifier, these two questions are very important. And apart from this, they will also design. See, we know operation, with the help of operational amplifier, we are designing so many practical applications. Yes. So, if you are observing, uh, in the practical applications point of view, with the help of uh, linear and non-linear amplifiers, if you observe, in the in case of linear amplifier, we are designing summer, differentiators, uh, voltage source follower, like that we are designing so many applications. Similarly, in case of non-linear amplifier circuits, we can design integrator, logarithmic amplifier, anti-log amplifier, symmetrical circuits. So, these things you must learn how to calculate. Just revise your notes because it is division class here and you will not be able to bring all the formulas. The other most important area is when the operation amplifier is used as a multi vibrator, what is the other most important formula? The next thing is the application. When operational amplifier is acting as a multi vibrator, when it is acting as a multi vibrator, there are certain questions to be prepared from this area. The first one is suppose if you are designing a stable multi vibrator and a bi stable multi vibrators. That is more stable, a stable, by stable, there are three types of multi vibrators are there, no? So, the first one, what they will ask is, in case of a stable, that is a stable multi vibrator, if you are designing operational amplifier, with the help of operational amplifier, if you are designing a stable multi vibrator, in case of a stable multi vibrator, how to explore the value of Total time constant output by this circuit. That is the first question. That is time period of the output waveform. Usually, with, when we are designing the stable multi vibrator, what will be the total time period of the output? That is the one of the most important formula. While playing with stable multi vibrator, this is the standard formula. Twice of RC into ln of three. You can directly write up. This is most important formula. Don't forget. Actually, this formula is basically derived from the value of factor beta, ln of 1 plus beta by 1 minus beta. If you observe the circuit, from the circuit, if, if you want to know the value of beta, you can also explore. In the feedback path, you can observe this one, R2 value, R1, everything will be given. So, from this, you can calculate the value of a stable multi-vibrator, total time period, output time period. That is what they will ask after the examination. The second question is monostable multi-vibrator. In monostable multi-vibrator, what is the formula? We can get the same total time period at the output side. This is a stable multi-vibrator. What is as such? For a stable, a stable, if it is given as a stable, what is how to write? Device one thing. So t is equal to total time period t is equal to twice of rc, that is 2 times of rc into ln 3, directly you can take, if beta factor is separately not given. If beta is not given, directly you can take this formula. Suppose if beta is given, or they are giving r1 and r2, then use the second formula. What is the second formula? Same, twice of rc into ln of, in bracket this is become 1 plus bt upon 1 minus bt. Just recall it once. Similarly, when we are playing with the monostable multi-vibrator, that is also another most important area. 
If you are observing monocellular material matter, in monocellular material matter, the formula is going to be constant and time constant. Sorry, the total time period taken by the output waveform. So that is going to be RC into same formula log 2. Here we will not be using log 3, this will be log 2. Just see the difference. In unstable material vibrator, it is 3, but in monostable material vibrator, it is 2. Okay? Hope you will not forget. So, these two formulas are very important when we are observing the operation of the device. So, questions will be often asked from these areas. That's it, sir. So, this is all about operation amplifier zone. The next one is we will have to design wave shaping circuits. Hope most of you uh, heard about it. That is one more part that is called signal generators under wave shaping circuits. If you are observing the signal generator and wave shaping circuit, that is nothing but design of oscillators. That is nothing but design of oscillators. So, the next topic you are doing, we are going to discuss about oscillators, designing of oscillators. So, when we are designing of oscillator, the first important formula that we must remember here is, in, usually we are designing the oscillator circuits with the help of positive filter. The type of feedback that we are using to design the oscillator circuit is nothing but we are designing it with the help of what type of feedback. Natural feedback will be always positive when we are discussing about oscillator circuit. First thing you must remember. Direct one more questions will be framed from here. Since it is the positive feedback amplifier, if we are taking the feedback amplifier general circuit, in oscillator circuit mostly, we are running, we are trying to run this without any external source. We are try trying to run this circuit without any external sources. Without any external source, we will be designing the circuit. So, how it is possible? Yes, we are doing it. We are doing it. It is acting as with the help of internal feedback circuit. It is running as a free running oscillators. It is not taking any supply from output circuit, that is outside, outside circuit. If we are observing, so what we can say is the ratio between the output voltage and the input voltage. Since I told it is positive feedback, so in case of positive feedback amplifier, the flow to gain is going to be open to gain upon 1 minus open to gain into beta. This is the uh, transfer function of the positive feedback operation amplifier. Under the next thing is, we are introducing some criteria to design the circuits. That criteria is simply called Barkushian criteria. The other most important part is Barkushian criteria. You must remember, sir, because this is the one of the most important part of the uh, designing circuits, wave shaping circuits. In oscillators, without applying Barkushian criteria, it is not possible to design the oscillator circuits. What is the Barkushian criteria? So, with the help of Barkushian criteria, what we can uh, do is we are applying certain conditions, just recollect ones. What we, what we are doing in percussion criteria, sir? So, the first one is, the product of gain and the feedback factor, this total value, magnitude must be always equal to 1. That is the first one. And second thing, its phase angle, gain and the beta phase angle must be equal to plus or minus 360 degree or 0 degree. So, that is the other most important criteria. So, these two things, you must keep it in your mind because they are very important. Next, uh, let us see the classification of oscillator circuits. Tell me, sir, what are the classifications are there? When we are talking about classification of oscillator circuits, basically we will be dealing with the three types of oscillators. The first one, RC oscillator circuit. We will be designing RC oscillator circuits. That is the most important oscillator. And the second type of oscillator we are calling it as LC oscillator circuits. The first one is RC oscillator. The second one is LC oscillator. What about the last one, sir? The last one is crystal oscillator. The last one is crystal oscillator circuits. Done, sir. Now, let us see all these uh, things one by one. When we are observing the RC oscillators, the one more question directly framed. They are having a certain range of frequency. All these oscillators are having certain range of frequency. If you are playing with the RC oscillator, this oscillator, the frequency of oscillation generated by this RC oscillator is nothing but audio frequency. 
the frequency of oscillation is rem frequency when we are talking about rc phase shift oscillator so rc phase shift oscillator is dealing with the frequency of oscillation is rem frequency that is one more question and second one is if you are playing with the lc oscillator the lc oscillator is nothing but radio frequency oscillation frequency will be radio frequency that is another most important one more question this is radio frequency oscillator when we are playing with the crystal oscillator of course crystal also dealing with the same radio frequency oscillator so who is the differ here so we are having two types of frequency the frequency of oscillation is here only two types one is audio frequency and the other one is radio frequency so rc oscillator alone playing with the audio frequency other two people are playing with the radio frequency one more question you must remember and what type of waveform that we can generate next one more question what type of waveform we can generate with the help of these people like if you are observing rc phase shift oscillator is helping us to bring sinusoidal natural waveforms so it is using us to design sinusoidal the wave shape the wave it is generating sinusoidal waveform that is another one more question it is generating sinusoidal waveform so rc phase shift oscillator is capable of generating sinusoidal waveform what about the lc oscillator sir lc oscillator sir is they are having the ability to generate square waveform lc oscillator is having the ability to generate square waveform so this is only for lc oscillator lc oscillator can generate square waveform so you can also observe that in the oscillator box if you observe they are also having a square wave so sorry triangular wave sawtooth waveform with the help of whom we are generating yes crystal oscillator will be helping us to design sawtooth and triangular waveforms sawtooth and triangular waveforms so what is the conclusion sir we saw that oscillators i have been broadly classified into three types rc phase shift oscillators and then lc phase shift oscillator and then crystal crystal phase shift oscillator rc oscillator in case of rc oscillator the frequency of oscillation is audio frequency oscillation other two people are radio frequency oscillation rc oscillator is always helping us to design sinusoidal pattern we have seen it is generating sinusoidal waveform lc oscillator is generating square waveform you must remember crystal oscillator is generating triangular and sawtooth waveform so they are very 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 important please don't forget so lc oscillator is generating what what do people are thinking na in the examination a problem will come you will forget these things they will ask find the nature of waveform generated by the lc oscillator usually what we would have studied in control system whenever we are observing the lc oscillator circuits in power system also what will happen is in case of undamped nature if your system is undamped system then it will be generating sinusoidal waveform what you will be thinking suppose if you forget the basic na your mind will be thinking that lc oscillator lc circuit is always generating sinusoidal waveform only we have studied this in control system and power system your mind will be thinking that but yes that is correct but we are not doing the same thing here in oscillator circuit with the help of positive feedback operational amplifier we are generating square waveforms with the help of lc oscillators we are not generating sinusoidal pattern this sinusoidal waveform will be done by rc phase shift oscillator this will not be done by lc oscillator usually so when we when we are framing the one more question you must remember rc phase shift oscillator is generating sinusoidal lc oscillator is generating square waveform crystal oscillator is generating triangular and sawtooth waveform don't forget all are very 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 important that's why i am repeatedly stressing these things okay let us keep our attention in rc phase shift oscillator is there anything to remember sir when we are discussing about rc phase shift oscillator the repeatedly framed question in case of rc phase shift oscillator is frequency of oscillation the first question let us take rc phase shift oscillator we saw rc phase shift oscillator is suitable for audio frequency first thing correct na sir while discussing about rc phase shift oscillator the primary thing what you must remember i am just writing only rc oscillator okay it does i have defined it already so when we are defining about rc type of oscillator circuits 
the first primary thing what is what we should remember sir tell me it is used for audio frequency application it is used for audio frequency application what is the second term it is used to generate the sinusoidal waveforms what is the third term you must remember frequency of oscillation repeatedly asked the question in the exam very 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 important there are so many exams you can ask so many questions only by using this formula frequency of rc phase shift oscillator whenever we are playing with the frequency of rc phase shift oscillator the most important term that you must remember here is the frequency is going to be 1 upon 2 pi into rc into square root of 6 Most of you have failed to keep this term in your mind. You will be confusing. In RC phase shift oscillator only, the factor root six will come into denominator. You must remember this. That is very 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 important factor. RC phase shift oscillator is one of the most important application in the exam point of view. Repeatedly questions will be framed based on its application, based on the nature of waveform that is generating, based on the formula of frequency of oscillation. So for RC phase shift oscillator, the formula is one by two by RC into root six. Don't forget, it is used for audio frequency generating sensory wave form. Frequency of oscillation has been done. The next most factor is calculation of beta feedback factor. You will be calculated to so you will be requested to identify the value of feedback factor. You no need to identify. You will have to remember. I am just saying because it is already derived. The feedback factor is defined as beta for positive feedback. Uh, RC phase shift oscillator, and if you are answering the factor value of beta, that is going to be this is called feedback factor. This value is going to be minus one by twenty nine. So the value of feedback factor is minus one by twenty nine, sir. Is it the question directly they will ask in the exam? No, they will not ask this question directly. Rather, what they will do is, we know from Barbusian criteria, a into beta value is equal to one. We have seen this condition. If beta equal to minus one by twenty nine, we are taking mod here. Mod means we should not consider this sign. If I am putting this value here, I will have to write a by twenty nine. I am putting mod sir, so sign will not come out. So from this, what you can say, gain of the operation amplifier is going to be twenty nine. From this, gain of the operation amplifier is going to be twenty nine. If the gain of the operation amplifier is going to be twenty nine, for example. If the circuit is, if they are implementing this concept with the help of, just I am saying, with the help of non-inverting operation amplifier, or let us say inverting operation amplifier, they have done this application with the help of inverting op-amp. What we know in case of inverting operation amplifier, the gain of the operation amplifier will be defined as feedback resistor RF divided by resistance R input resistance R. Since we are considering only magnitude, only magnitude, so don't consider this sign. So from this, I can say mod A equal to feedback resistance divided by input resistance R. Just now we have seen this value is 29 in case of RC phase shift oscillator. So this will be equal to feedback resistance RF by R. Now in the exam, they will frame the question from here only. So from this, we can say feedback resistance equal to 29 times of input resistance. That is the most important formula repeatedly asked in the examination. That's why I am saying RC phase shift oscillator is important in examination point of view. All the points are valid points. You should remember the RC frequency sinusoidal frequency of oscillation one by two by RC root six. Then feedback factor is minus one by twenty nine. Gain will become twenty nine. Then if they are listening it inverting with the help of inverting operation amplifier, then this is the formula. If they are listening it with the help of non-inverting operation amplifier, then what will you do? For non-inverting operation amplifier, the gain value will be one plus R F by R. Again, equal to twenty nine. Now substitute twenty nine. Again, they they might have give it. They will give R. They will be asking you to calculate R F. R they will give R F. You will be able to calculate the value of R. R F formula is only these two circuit they will take. Don't worry. You might you don't need to think that sir. There are so many application. How do we know which application from which application they are framing the question? One is strictly they will bring the question from this area only. Don't worry. Either they will take the first one, non-inverting or inverting operation amplifier with the same formula that I am giving here. Okay, you can just remember these two things because as I am saying, this thing, these things are very, 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 very important in your examination point of view. 
Okay. The next one is what is the condition for oscillation, sir? For frequency of oscillation, the condition is as we are observing the value of feedback resistance must be greater than or equal to 29 types of input resistance. That is the condition for frequency of oscillation. This condition we are standardly maintaining for RC phase shift oscillator. With the help of this condition only, we are designing the circuit. Okay, sir. Hope you will not forget. So, there is one more uh, type of oscillator is there in this category. That is green bridge oscillator. Just to reiterate once. So, there is one more oscillator is there in the same type. First one is RC phase shift oscillator. And the second one is green bridge oscillator. That will also come under the same category only phase shift oscillator. Another type is this is RC phase shift oscillator. Under RC oscillators, under RC oscillator circuits, the first one is RC phase shift oscillator. That is what we discussed in the last topic here. Under RC oscillator, now I am taking one more oscillator circuit that is called green bridge. That is also type of RC application. RC oscillator only. It will be clearly mentioned in the question whether they are using green bridge or RC phase shift oscillator. So the second most important point is under uh, operation amplifier is vein bridge operation amplifier oscillator. Vein bridge oscillator. So when we are observing vein bridge oscillator, what are the important terms? Uh, important terms that we have to remember, sir. Of course, the first one is frequency. Calculation of frequency. With this same name that I am giving, they will give the value of resistor R1 and they will give the value of resistor R2, C1, C2. It is very simple, they will ask only frequency of oscillation. In green bridge oscillator, they will ask frequency of oscillation. What is the formula, sir? 1 upon 2 pi into square root of same formula R1 plus R2 total resistance into the gap. See, same capacitor value will be given. C1 will be C2 because the connection of capacitor will be done in parallel. So that will be simply. C1 into C2, the total net value of the capacitor will become simply. Now, the thing, oh, sorry, one thing here. We are playing with the VN bridge, no? So, in VN bridge circuit, it will be important. See, when R1 and R2 will be given, C1 and C2 will be given, just to multiply them and put everything inside the bracket, inside the square bracket. In the question, suppose it is given that R1 and R2 both are having same value and C1, C2 both are having same value. Then in that case, what will, what will happen sir? Directly you can write 2 pi RC will be your final formula. Why sir? R1 and R2 equal to this will become R square. C1, C2 will become C square. So you can take it out. Your well, formula will become frequency of oscillation will become simply 1 by 2 pi RC. That is the other most important formula. Now, what is the condition, sir? For green bridge oscillator, in order to generate the frequency of oscillation, is there any specific condition? Of course, here also, for the frequency of oscillation, feedback factor must be equal to 1 by 3. We have seen for RC phase shift oscillator, feedback factor beta value is equal to minus 1 by 29. For green bridge oscillator, this value will be 1 by 3. Then, what is the condition for uh, generation of Sir, in terms of resistor, I can define feedback resistor will become whenever they are asking. Suppose if they are asking it, then you have to write down at least minimum this should be greater than or equal to. If it is 3, yeah, sir. if this one is 3, then based on the uh, input that they are considering, so this value is going to be 2 times of input resistance. That is the condition for main gauge oscillator. Sir, RC phase shift oscillator I have given. Then what is uh, feedback factor is 1 by 10. From this side, 1 by 29, then we saw the value of gain is going to be 29. In case of negative feedback, same formula. You don't need to memorize anything here. Just remember this feedback factor. From that, calculate the value of A. We know A into beta equal to 1. Now, substitute the value of beta here. So, here if you are substituting beta equal to 1 by 29, then A will, go, A will become 29. This is for RC phase shift oscillator. For green bridge oscillator, we know A into beta equal to 1. If I am putting beta equal to 1 by 3, then the value of gain A equal to 3. Since we are designing it with the help of non inverting operational amplifier, so RF by R equal to 3 now, that is gain. If you are passing it here, 1, to the left, right hand side, RF by R will become 3 minus 1, that will become 2. 
So the value of RF equal to 2 times of R. This is the minimum expected value. If you are designing with the inverting operational amplifier, then we know RF by R equal to directly 3. In that case, I can say the value of RF equal to 3 times of R. That's why we are taking minimum value. See that here we know 3 times of R, here we are having 2 times of R. So the minimum expected value is 2 times of R. Maximum can be anything. So in order to generate the oscillation, the condition for the generation of frequency of oscillation is going to be the value of feedback resistance minimum value must be greater than or equal to 2 times of R in case of wind rate transmitter and it will be, uh, we have seen that 29 times we have to, when we are discussing about uh, RC pressure transmitter we have seen this will be 29 times of R. So both are very very important sir of course you will have to remember. Okay, let us move in on to the another type of oscillator that is LC oscillator. So the next most important area is LC oscillators. Let us discuss about LC oscillator and its important formulas. While observing LC oscillator, everything will be given the question. You no need to you no need to perform anything. While performing LC oscillator, the first oscillator is carpet oscillator. The first one is carpet oscillator. Hope you all studied these things. Huh? Carpet oscillator. Even you have not touched this area, just to touch and remember the formulas because questions should be directly taken from formulas only. Carpet oscillator. When we are observing the carpet oscillator, the frequency of oscillation is going to be once again. The direct question that will be framed from here is in case of carpet oscillator, since in the name it is started with a C, name is started with a C as a carpet oscillator. So for the generation of frequency of oscillation, in carpet oscillator, two capacitors will be connected in series. And the one inductor will be connected in parallel along with this. I am not describing everything here. I am just giving only important things. Just remember. Let me consider inductor L, capacitor C1 and C2. Since these two people are connected in series, no, sir. So the net capacitor is going to be, we know, for parallel configuration, if, sorry, series configuration, if two capacitors are connected in series, then the total capacitor value is going to be C1 into C2 by C1 plus C2. First we calculate the total capacitor. Once you find that, then you can calculate the frequency of oscillation. What is the frequency of oscillation, sir? I will write it here. Frequency of oscillation will become 1 upon 2 pi into square root of L into C equivalent. What is L of C equivalent, sir? C1 into C2 by C1 plus C2. Don't forget this is for carpet oscillator. Okay, next uh, the another most uh, important type that is Hartley oscillator. Let us go to the next type of oscillator. One is under LC oscillator, the first one is carpet oscillator. <coughs> the second one is Hartley oscillator. That is also most important. Questions will be framed from any of these one. Hartley oscillator. Repeatedly asked the question is frequency of oscillation only. Hartley oscillator. How to calculate this sir? I will tell you. The value of Hartley oscillator is going to be frequency of oscillation. Once again, the formula is going to be. Name is start with the H. Correct answer. H is nothing but, uh, you can remember like this. It is indicates the unit of inductor. It is unit of inductor. Yes, no, sir. So, when, when the name is start with the H, then it is the unit of inductor. So, correct two inductors in series. See, just for remembering purpose, I am just saying something. Okay, you should remember like this. Carpet oscillator means it starts with the letter C. So, two capacitors will be in series. Hartley oscillator started with the letter H, inductor, unit is Henry. So, two inductor must be in series. So, L1 into L2, one capacitor. Now, how will you calculate the L equivalent, sir? If two inductors are connected to series, then the total L equivalent will be L1 plus L2. Then the frequency of oscillation is going to be 1 upon. 2 pi into square root of C into L equivalent. That's it, sir. This is how we are calculating the value of Hartley oscillator. The frequency of oscillation when it is asked for Hartley oscillator. See, you have to remember, sir. Ultimately, you must remember there is no choice for you. You have to remember this formula. Okay. The next one, they will sometimes, uh, they will also frame the question from clamp oscillator. There is one more type under this category that is called. Clap oscillator. It is very rapt, I am saying. Clap oscillator. 
in case of clamp oscillator we will be having three capacitors we will be having three capacitors three capacitors are needed to every given so in clamp oscillator whenever they are observing suppose if they are asking you to calculate the area of frequency of oscillation they will mention everything so what you have to do is frequency of oscillation the formula is going to be 1 upon 2 pi into square root of as we showed in clamp oscillator we will be considering only one capacitor for the calculation of uh, frequency of oscillation that is with the help of capacitor C3 so in the exam they will give one variable capacitor so they will give three capacitors three capacitors will be given I am not going to draw the complete circuit I am just showing one variable capacitor will be given that is C3 you can remember like this when the variable capacitor will be given, I am just naming the C3, just to focus on that variable capacitor value, put it inside the bracket, 2 by into L, only one electron will be given, with the C3 value will be given, just with the help of variable capacitor, you can calculate the value of frequency of oscillation, I am repeating again, this is only for clamp oscillator, we are lying under LC oscillator circuits, under the calculation, sorry, under the LC oscillators, we have seen three types, first one is what? Carl pitch. First, we were discussed about Carl pitch. After that, we have been discussed about Hartley type. Next, we are discussing about the clamp type of oscillator. In clamp type of oscillator, the frequency of oscillation is going to be 1 upon 2 pi into square root of L into C3, where C3 is nothing but variable capacitor. It will be mentioned in the question. In other two categories, you will have the L equivalent and C equivalent. And I have shown the circuit in the same way, circuit diagram will be given. Otherwise, they will give you the data for capacitor and inductors. You can calculate it from there. But for clamp oscillator, they will mention that variable capacitor value C3 is this much. From there, you can calculate the value of frequency of oscillation. Hope you understand. Next one is uh, last type of oscillator that is called a crystal oscillator. The other most important oscillator is crystal oscillator. Let us discuss about crystal oscillator crystal oscillator when we are playing with the crystal type of oscillator so you must know its uh, equivalent circuit if you are observing the crystal type of oscillator you will have one resistor inductor capacitor of course in parallel with this you will also be having one more capacitor so when we are observing crystal oscillator, this is the electrical equivalent circuit. For this, we will be having two type of uh, resonance. One is serious resonance and the other one is parallel resonance. Crystal oscillator is having two resonance frequency. One is resonance frequency of uh, is it is formed. Resonance frequency happened because of serious RLC. And uh, one more resonance frequency they will ask in the exam that is parallel resonance frequency. You will have to calculate two things. One is serious resonance frequency and another one is parallel resonance frequency where it will be asked in the exam. So how to calculate the serious resonance frequency? I will just name it R, L, C, 1 and C2. Just observe. Now from this, you can calculate the value of serious and the parallel resonance. How do we calculate? Very simple. Serious resonance. Resonance with the help of serious parameters, R, L, C. That is, you know, for our circuit, the standard formula 1 by 2 pi into square root of L into C1, that is serious resonance. Directly, you can consider this inductor and this capacitor to calculate serious resonance. But when it comes to parallel resonance, it is very important to calculate the C equivalent before calculating parallel resonance frequency. C equivalent is going to be, since C1 and C2 are in parallel configuration, these two branches are connected in parallel configuration. So the net capacitance, sorry, while forming the formation, since we are taking these two tenders here, actually here the formation will become serious combination. When they are playing with the circuit equivalent, they will be playing with serious connection. Sorry, there is a technical error. Now, so C equivalent is going to be C1 and C2 by C1 plus C2 when they are asking about parallel resonance circuit. From this, what you can do is you can explore the value of resonance frequency of parallel circuit. So, this is sorry, parallel resonance. So, the parallel resonance frequency is going to be 1 upon 2 pi into square root of L into C equivalent. That is it. That is for parallel resonance. 
So we have completed all type of oscillator circuits now. It is done with this. So you have to remember what are the formulas that we have discussed in here because questions should be directly asked in the examination from all these type of areas. So it is very important to know it's important. Another most important area that we must know here is that is uh, triple five timer configuration. You might have seen that there is one more type that is triple five timer. I am just giving the important uh, terms in triple five timer. Just remember that is very important. So the next one is triple five timer. See, with the help of a triple five timer circuits, computations will be designing more stable multi operator, as stable multi operator. So what they will do, na? Questions will be directly framed for from more stable multi operator and as stable multi operator. So we will do one thing. It will be these two type things we will cover in the next class. So this mono stable multi operator under a stable multi operator design with the help of triple five timer we will cover in the next class. So with this let's find out the today session. If you have any doubts, you can also ask in the comment section. You will be shortly replied. So this is all for this lecture. We will.